Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll be splitting my time with the member for West Vancouver, Sunshine, Sunshine Coast, and Sea to Sky Country. Mr. Speaker and honourable members, I'm pleased to take part in this important decision regarding Canada's refocused approach to the situation in Iraq and Syria. We must always keep in mind our ultimate goal, peace and stability in the region and the eradication of ISIL. As we debate our current and future involvement, we must consider how this conflict is evolving, the critical follow-on phases of the mission, and all possible contributions the Canadian Armed Forces can make, and which roles and capability the coalition needs the most. In past missions, following the initial military engagements, control of the regions had fallen to extremists, some parts of the world. Part of the reason for this, because some may have underestimated the importance of those follow-on phases, and we don't want to make the same mistake again. By taking a leadership role as we transition to the next phase, we will secure and safeguard all the gains made by our CF-18s and the other forces in the air campaign, and all the work that has already been done. The fact that the local security forces be well equipped and well trained is essential to the success of this new uh, step. And that's a consensus opinion within the coalition, Mr. Speaker. And I would like to note that we will remain in solidarity with our allies by offering training and the tools that they need for their success on the ground. In addition, beyond our current commitment, we must also ensure that our partners are, in future, capable of maintaining political stability in their region. And that's why, last week, in consultation with our allies, we committed to tripling our training capacity, as well as our support capacity in northern Iraq. ...has a strong record with respect to training local forces. While no two missions are the same, there are lessons to be drawn from past experiences. From May 2011 to March 2014, Canadian Armed Forces members were deployed to Operation Attention, a training mission based out of Kabul in Afghanistan. They did incredible and invaluable work establishing basic individual recruit training institutions and helped train more than 160 battalion-sized units. Canadian Armed Forces members also provided specialized training in fields such as combat, first aid, logistics, signals, and target designation. But the mission provided so much more. The, advance, the advice and assistance we provide helped Afghan forces become self-sufficient so that they are now protecting their own national sovereignty. We're also seeing positive revolt, results from our ongoing training efforts in Ukraine through Operation Unifier, a contingent of 20, 200 Canadian Armed Forces members providing military training and capacity building to Ukraine's forces personnel. Working closely with our allies, we are supporting the country with its efforts to maintain sovereignty, security, and stability in the region. With the help of a training program de designed by the Canadian Armed Forces members and in conjunction with the United Kingdom and the United States, Ukrainian soldiers are learning advanced military skills. The Royal Canadian Engineers are training Ukrainian forces the skills to prevent the devastation of explosive threats, such as unexploded ordnances and mines. Due to the nature of recent Ukrainian Armed Forces operations, military personnel are required to operate in urban environments, a skill that the Canadian Armed Forces mastered during our tours in Afghanistan. We're also teaching them how to efficiently conduct searches 
for weapons, for ammunition, and for parts used to build improvised explosive devices that may be deliberately hidden or disguised. These practical and tactical skills will dramatically increase the effectiveness of the Ukrainian armed forces. Through these missions, such as Op Attention and Op Unifier, the Canadian Armed Forces is helping nations set the conditions for long-term <coughs> peace, stability, and prosperity in troubled regions all over the world. And we are viewed as experts in just this kind of mission. Des membres des Forces Armées Canadiennes Members of the Canadian Armed Forces have been training, advising, and assisting Iraqi security forces since September 2014. The Minister of National Defence visited the region in December to spend time with the troops, to assess the situation on the ground, and to meet with coalition partners. This trip provided the Minister with valuable insight into hardships faced by those living in the region, as well as the challenges our Canadian Armed Forces members are facing and what precisely is required to achieve our ultimate goal, the eradication of ISIL and stability in the region. The work our Canadian Armed Forces members are doing is absolutely essential. Without this work, the chances of long-term success in the region would be greatly diminished. We are extremely proud of their efforts, and we stand behind them 100%. First, our troops are aiding local security forces in operational planning. This has led to more precise and successful operations. Second, Our troops are working with commanders to determine, design, and implement the skills that they need to defeat ISIL on the ground. They are assisting local security forces by implementing a training regime, which will allow them to fully hone those fighting skills. And then, our mentors will provide advice and assistance to local security forces and apply those valuable lessons on the battlefield. The Canadian Armed Forces will ensure that those skills are properly used on the ground. Basic shooting and marksmanship skills platoon and indirect weapon support skills. This enables them to fire more accurately and more effectively and engage targets further than before. It also reduces the risk of casualties and collateral damage. The men and women of the Canadian Armed Forces currently deployed have also assisted by co providing combat first aid training. Another focus of our training mission is on providing tactical mobility by teaching the Iraqi security forces how to detect and avoid IEDs. We learned a lot from our experience in Afghanistan through our counter-improvised explosive device task force, which focused on disarming these explosive devices and dismantling the network responsible for financing, creating, and planning the explosives. I'm happy to let my colleagues know that according to Canadian Armed Forces reports, these local forces have successfully located and neutralized several IEDs, saving tens, maybe even hundreds of lives. Furthermore, our men and women in uniform are intimately aware of the need to respect the rule of law, and the tenets of the law of armed conflict are infused in every program of instruction that they offer. Mr. Speaker, the success of our mission in Iraq will be determined by the effectiveness of local ground forces in cooperation with our security partners. We are proud of the progress to date. 
In other words, local security forces are manifestly better now than when we're, we were, they were when we started, but much more is needed. They are now taking the fight to ISIL. We are helping, but they are the ones fighting. And that fight is more efficient and effective thanks to our men and women in uniform. Thank you, Mr.